it's time for an oil market update. So the last oil update video I did was at the end of January of this year. Here's the video. I'll attach a link in the info section. Where's the oil price heading? Why the global economy needs a Goldilocks oil price? And basically, if I can see here correctly, the oil price was around 60 or a little above 60 at the time of this video. And I said that if the oil price would most likely continue to go higher in the near term to maybe $75, $80 a barrel, and that that price would potentially bring on more supply. And then that's when the problems would come. And so back to today's oil price, we are as of May 10th, 2018, recording this video at just above $71 WTI price and a little over $77 a barrel Brent crude price. We are in that range where more of the marginal higher cost oil production that really has not been economic for at least the last couple of years, that's the deep water offshore oil especially, is going to start coming back online. So the longer this oil price stays either at current levels above $65, $70 a barrel or goes higher, the more likely it is that the deep water offshore oil will come back online. So the Saudis have said that they do not want $100 a barrel oil. They said that they can make a profit at 60, 65. And I think that's the Saudis looking at the oil market from supply demand standpoint and seeing that if the oil price gets too high, it acts basically like a tax increase on consumers and that reduces discretionary income People carpool more, people don't buy SUVs, they trade down on their vehicles, they don't do as much driving. And so the other the other thing is, like I said, a higher oil price is kind of like an increase from the Federal Reserve in the interest rate. And a higher oil price basically acts like a tax on discretionary income for consumers. So if we do have a higher oil price, either it goes higher or it stays at these levels for a while, say six months or 12 months, we are going to see more deep water offshore oil come back online. And so that could, that would be the supply, potentially large increase in supply that could come back online. So that supply is not going to come online overnight, especially oil companies that either had to have huge write-offs. There, there has been some bankruptcies. I think Cedral, which was a very large deep water offshore player, they either went bankrupt or they're close to it. There's been a huge amount of write-downs, especially for the deep water companies like Transocean. So this is a long-term chart on my screen of Transocean. This is over a five-year chart from 2013 to forward. And you know, you can see that Transocean was above $43 a share and it's still only back down to 13. So in terms of like this year for a 52 week range, Transocean did get as low as around $7. So it has almost doubled from $7 lows, but it's still nowhere near the price it used to be. And when the oil price was well above $100 a barrel, Transocean, I think, was a $100 stock, well above $100 stock with an enormous dividend. I remember reading stories like 20, 30 years ago when Transocean was a penny stock, and there was people who had speculated on Transocean when it was a dollar a share, and it went up to over 100 that had understood that the oil market, in order to increase supply and maintain global supply levels, the oil market was going to have to add an enormous amount of deep water offshore. This was before the fracking revolution. So the fracking revolution has, to a certain extent, reduced the amount of oil supply needed, right now at least, for the last couple of years, and for right now for deep water offshore. The supply is higher cost, especially because initially the shale oil costs were higher than deep water, and then to the credit of the shale oil players, there's been innovation with technology and, and other cost efficiencies there. They've learned how to drill the, wells, drill the wells better and become more efficient at it. And the cost of shale oil wells is just a lot lower now than deep water is. So deep water around 60, $65 a barrel, maybe 70. The economics of deep water becomes profitable again. However, the price has to stay there for a while for the drillers, the deep water offshore oil service companies, and for the oil producers to hire them. And, you know, these companies, whether it's Transocean or Diamond Offshore Drilling or Schlumberger SLB or Halliburton, those companies would potentially, 
if the oil price stayed at these levels for a while, say six to 12 months or went higher, those companies would probably benefit just as much, if not more than a lot of the oil producers. But the question then is how long and how high could this oil rally last? The other thing before I end this video was that, and this has me skeptical that this oil rally is sustainable, is that there's a record amount of long oils futures contracts in the spec in the speculative section. So if you go to the commitment of traders for oil futures, and I'll attach this article and you can take a look, but there's a rec record amount of speculative longs for oil. And before I go, you know, I just wanted to show the one year oil chart. So this is the one year oil chart here. And you can see since really the summer of 2017, since about June, June, July-ish, look at, look at the, you can draw a trend line here and uh, an upward bullish trend line. And basically the oil price hasn't even really pulled back to the trend line even that much. I took the screenshot on Tuesday, May 8th. So it was a couple days ago, but you guys get the general point here that the oil price the last year has been in a big uptrend. And so the specs have been right for a while, but it is worrisome, especially from a contrarian, contrarian perspective, that there's record speculative long positions for oil futures. So what do you guys think about, about that? You think then from a contrarian perspective that maybe in the short term, we do have the oil price continue higher. As I predicted in January, the oil price could go to maybe $80 a barrel, maybe even a little bit higher. But at some point, there's going to be a lot more supply that's going to come online. And obviously, I think that supply will, a lot of it will probably be hedged. I think that's something that a lot of the U.S. shale oil producers learn from. But, you know, those hedges will come off and there could potentially be a supply glut in the, I don't know, the next... 12 months, I would say less than two years if the oil price stays higher, goes higher. And then that supply glut with a higher oil price, that's going to lead to a bust. And we do know from the past, whether that's the 1970s with the oil price going crazy or 2007 with the oil price going crazy, that a higher oil price going much, much higher and higher does contribute to a global economic recession. Like I said, a higher oil price, when it gets to a certain level, it acts as a tax on the global economy, a tax on discretionary income, a tax on consumer spending. Uh, last chart I want to show before I let you guys go on this short little video. So this is the five-year chart of the oil price, WTI. So we bottomed around 35. So we, we touched 35 again. You know, we touched it during 2008 financial crisis after the oil price went in 2007, I think as high as like $138 a barrel. And then it crashed to like, I don't know, 35, 30, between 35 and 39, somewhere around there. And then it got, the oil price went back again after the central bank reflation to triple digits. And then it crashed again in, it looks like June of 2016, down around 35 again. And we've, we've had a pretty strong rally on the five-year chart back up here. So there was a trading range for a while, which is what I think ultimately the oil market will be a very volatile trading range. But then only a year ago, the oil price went into a very bullish uptrend after that. So very interesting times with oil. I would watch the oil market. It's a very large, very important market still. And we'll have to see, monitor the oil market. I think it's, it's an important price to monitor because if we do get you know, $80 a barrel or higher WTI, a lot of marginal oil production could come back online, especially if the oil price stays there for six months, 12 months or longer. And then that's what's going to lead with my thesis to the supply glut. I do enjoy looking at the oil market. There's a lot of really interesting stuff with it. There's some interesting technology innovation. The fracking revolution has really surprised a lot of people, myself included, with the production growth in the Permian and how basically they've been able to innovate and grow oil production. I just, there's so many people, myself included, that did not see the Bakken, the Eagle Ford, and especially the Permian now being able to continue growing production like it is. And now the U.S. is one of the largest oil producers in the world. So I don't think the U.S. anytime soon will be a net exporter of oil because the U.S. still imports a lot of oil and for the refiners, they need to import certain types of oil to blend it with some of the oil from shale oil because it's the lights we crude and a lot of our refineries built around refining heavier oil. 
But, you know, the, the politicians talk about the U.S. is going to be fully energy independent and all this other stuff. It's, I mean, they've been saying this since, I think, Jimmy Carter and Nixon, that every single president has said that the, the U.S. is going to be energy independent. So it's, a, it's all, you know, political rhetoric. Please like this video, share it with friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to the Wall Street for Main Street YouTube channel if you have not already done so. We're closing in on the 20,000 YouTube channel subscriber milestone, despite YouTube censorship. And hopefully we'll be able to get to 30,000 or even 40,000 YouTube channel subscribers quickly if YouTube doesn't shut down the channel. If YouTube does shut down this channel, remember to also sign up for the Wall Street for Main Street email list that's on the wallstreetformainstreet.com website and will tell you where the videos are going to be uploaded instead of YouTube. Also, if you really like the content and you decide that you want to give a one-time donation, you can go to the wallstreetformainstreet.com website where there's different options for you to do so. Or you can become a Patreon contributor. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to providing you guys with some of the best information, analysis, and financial education available out there for free or paid.